Barney Convalescent Hospital is pledged to give care to children. Boys and girls from Montgomery and surrounding counties are eligible to receive competent therapy and medical aid. A bright and cheerful environment is maintained to psychologically help speed the child's recovery. Barney is a 40-bed hospital with four beds or cribs to each room. Single rooms are utilized for isolation cases. Admission to Barney Hospital must be prescribed by a medical doctor. Children arrive from other hospitals either by the Barney Ambulance or are brought from home to the hospital by their parents or relatives. To better visualize the Barney facilities, we will follow the nursing staff as they attend to their daily routine. We see members of the staff reporting for duty, which engulfs a variety of tasks. Medication prescribed by the doctor is the first duty of the day. With required drugs and written orders on each patient, the nurse begins her eight-hour day. Hospitalized children require as much or more laboratory work than an adult. Here in Barney's own laboratory, a prescribed blood test is being made by a trained technician. Many of the nurse's routine duties are using mechanized equipment, such as the aspirator. Ruby is unable to swallow normally and requires artificial means to clear nasal and throat passages of excess fluids. This is a task that must be repeated many times during 24 hours. Chuck is being turned by the use of the striker frame. This frame could be described as a sandwich bed the patient being the best part, sandwiched between two separate frames. These frames are of metal covered with a piece of canvas tied to the frame as tightly as possible. Patients such as Chuck with spinal cord injuries, fractures, or pressure sores from long recumbency are either unable or not permitted to turn themselves. With the striker frame, these patients may be turned without harmful movement to any part of their bodies. The nurse and nurse's aide employ teamwork for the process of padding, tying, and turning the patient. This type of frame is a great back saver in general nursing care. And since safety of the patient is a constant consideration of the hospital staff, this constitutes a safe means of handling badly involved patients. Children such as Julie with chest and heart abnormalities need more oxygen than normal. After the nurse places Julie in the oxygen tent, she must check the condition of the patient, the mechanics of the tent, and the flow of oxygen. An elementary school teacher provided by the Board of Education is on permanent duty during the school term. All children of school age carry on their work. Those who are able go to the classroom and are taught under normal conditions. Others are given their school work at the bedside. Whether a child is at Barney a few days or months, his regular work goes on. When dismissed, he can re-enter his own class. All food for the children and staff is prepared in Barney's stainless steel kitchen and served from there. Steam carts serve hot food to the patients in their rooms. Our busy nurse does not appear reluctant in accepting this well-filled tray from our modern staff cafeteria. Eat heartily, young lady. The afternoon is yet to come. The majority of handicapped children need to be fed. This individual feeding is the responsibility of the nurse's aides with the supervision of the nursing staff. The nurse has the help of the portal lift for the task of taking a patient from bed and placing him in a wheelchair. The lift is hydraulically powered, movable, and can be used for many activities. The lift is being used here for Paul, 
to prevent stretch of shoulder girdle muscles as he is lifted from place to place. Patients convalescing from a prolonged illness need help in gradually adjusting from the horizontal bed position to the vertical standing position. This adjustment is speeded with the use of the tilt table. The nurse, securely strapping the patient to the table, may place him in any position from a 10 degree angle to a 90 degree angle without danger of the patient falling. The staff at Barney Hospital conducts monthly safety meetings. Periodically, all staff members participate with a visiting fireman in exercises concerned with fire prevention and patient safety measures during a fire. Every staff member is expected to be familiar with methods of extinguishing fires with readily handy materials and to know how to protect the patient should a fire start in the bed. This teaching demonstration was given by the Dayton Fire Department during Fire Prevention Week. Fresh air and sunshine are as important to the health of the patients as good food, therapy, and nursing care. All patients, with the exception of those in isolation, are taken into the garden each day when the weather permits. During their stay at Barney Hospital, children also reap benefits from a full party schedule. Birthdays and all holiday seasons give full reign to King Merriment. In addition to Christmas, there are Easter, Thanksgiving, and Halloween parties. But Christmas is especially the happy time at Barney. Santa visits with a full bag of toys for everyone. All join in to sing the traditional carols. From their windows, the children can view a replica of the nativity scene. Christ is kept in Christmas at Barney. In addition to the inpatient services, Barney Hospital has developed a large outpatient department. Many of the local orthopedists give periodic examinations to their patients in this area of the hospital. These children, patients, and their parents are waiting their turn for examination. As many as 3,902 outpatient visits are recorded in the course of a year. On the first visit to the outpatient department, each family is interviewed by the medical secretary for a case history and to record the medical referral of the patient to the orthopedist. Barney has a complete x-ray department for both inpatient and outpatient use. Here the technician is taking an AP x-ray of the lower extremity. The cassette containing the film is placed under the patient's leg. The x-ray tube is adjusted for height and settings are made for the proper densities. Films are developed in Barney's own dark room and interpreted by the staff x-ray specialist. Here we have Tommy being prepared for an electrocardiogram. This is just one more activity of our busy nurse. A number of cardiac patients are admitted to Barney Hospital during the year. Therefore, it is necessary for the hospital to have electrocardiograph equipment and trained technicians to make the tracings. Electrodes are attached to Tommy's arms, legs, and chest. Through these electrodes, the machine records a graphic tracing of the heart action, giving the physician a means of studying that action. Mary, a post-polio patient with curvature of the spine, is having a stretch put upon her entire spine by application of padded ankle cuffs for leg traction and a Sayer head sling for head traction. At the same time, Three points of pressure are placed to her trunk, one point by a strap around her hips, another by a strap around her chest, and counter pressure at the apex of the curve. This preparation for a body cast is being done on the bell fracture table. 
this versatile piece of equipment affords space and accessories for application of almost any type of cast following traction placing of pressure and plenty of felt padding the cast is wrapped Six inch rolls and five thickness, fast setting plaster splints are immersed in warm water, squeezed and applied as quickly as possible. The patient will remain in this body cast for several weeks until surgery is performed to hold the correction gained by the cast. As soon as the plaster hardens, the three pressure points, leg and head traction, are all released, as well as the table strap that supported Mary during the entire procedure. The table strap has been wrapped into the cast, so is removed as the patient is placed on the cart to be returned to her room in the hospital. The brace shop is owned and operated by Mr. W.F. LaForche. His shop is equipped with modern machinery for the working of metals, leather, and fabrics necessary in the making of braces. Since every brace is custom made to special specifications, most of the work is done by hand. This is a pair of long leg braces with joints at the hips and a pelvic band. It has movable joints with lock arrangements for the locking out of all motion. During many of the annual fun drives of the community chest, Barney outpatients participate in these drives. Here, Bobby Joe and Jack are entertaining and being entertained at one such drive. We wonder who's having the most fun. Adjacent to Barney Hospital is located the offices of United Cerebral Palsy. Barney Hospital and United Cerebral Palsy jointly conduct a program for cerebral palsied children. This program helps these children with neuromuscular involvements to take the first big step forward into a world that stresses being normal. United Cerebral Palsy provides transportation to the hospital each day for those children whose parents are unable to bring them. These drivers are cheerful and safety conscious with their wards. The school program is held daily from 8.45 until 12 noon. The program consists of preschool activities, physical, occupational, and speech therapy on both a group and individual basis. The school day begins with morning exercises, which are similar to those held in any school system. When possible, the child responds orally as well as physically to the roll call. A good morning song is sung, and when time permits, the children share the pleasure of a new article of clothing or personal experience with their classmates. Group occupational therapy is designed to provide the children as a group to better use their involved arms and hands in order to become more independent in their daily living activities. This exercise is concerned with the task of putting on sweaters. Just this little task will save busy mothers time in the daily routine of caring for their families. Crutch class is a part of the physical therapy program. The purpose of this class is to teach children with crutches to handle them in all positions for balance. First exercises are balancing forward or back one crutch at a time. At the end of the class, the children are given a walking assignment with supervisors nearby to prevent them from falling. It is much more fun and less like work to do these activities together. Skills of communication are taught in speech class. 
Correct articulation of sounds increase mobility of tongue and lips. Identification of common objects and telling about them develop language abilities. Functional class is another physical therapy class. The children learn to become even more independent in their activities. Here we have children getting from their chairs to the floor, from the floor to their chairs, from the chairs to their crutches, and walking away. Normal children do not need extra help before school days in learning to walk, talk, and dress, which our program stresses. Good work, buddy. The prime goal of the cerebral palsy program is to prepare the children for admission to Gorman School. To assure that all possible is being done for each individual child, frequent staff meetings are held with the teacher, all therapists and aides present. Individual cases are discussed in order that all activities are centered on a similar goal. All therapy treatment at Barney must be prescribed by the child's physician, whether it be group or individual. Here we have three therapists doing prescribed treatment. Chuck is working to build power in shoulders and arms. Rick, table treatment. And Kim, walking training in the parallel bars. This lad in speech therapy has a severe hearing loss along with his speech disorder. He is learning to lip read and discriminate between verbs as he hears the therapist say the word through amplification, sees the therapist's lip movement in the mirror, and sees the representation of the action on the presented picture. In individual occupational therapy, Becky is being taught self-help activities. Before a child is able to execute these activities, she must first learn to reach, grasp, and release. Becky is learning to use a spoon to feed herself. When this task is accomplished, mother is free to have uninterrupted meals. Where does Barney Hospital get the funds to carry on this work? Those who are able pay for their own child. Ohio State Crippled Children's Services accepts some patients for payment. The county from the hospital levy pays for the medically indigent. Many parents carry Blue Cross or some other insurance. The Montgomery County Society for Crippled Children through Easter Seals pays for much of the outpatient work. The polio chapters pay for part of the polio work. Barney is a community chest agency and receives an allotment. The United Cerebral Palsy Association, also a chest agency, pays for part of the cost in the special program for cerebral palsied children. Barney Hospital uses the interest from its own endowment fund. Ruth Lyons, from her Christmas fund, gives money for parties, gifts, entertainment, and Christmas. Barney Hospital has many generous friends who send donations throughout the year. If it were not for these many friends, our little people could not have the tender, loving care provided at Barney Hospital. There is no end. As long as there are children who need care, as long as there are people devoted to giving this care, just so long will there be a Barney Hospital. No man stands so tall as when he stoops to help a child.